Coming up, a sudden stroke leaves a young mother fighting for her life, and faith fuels a comeback for a two-time Olympic champion. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. It's a great day, Bill, if you're willing to look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective is a choice, and it's yeah. actually incredibly powerful. Right, it is so true. So, Bill, do you think God really cares? Well, of course, we know that, and we see that, but sometimes the challenge is how do we feel that? And that's what we hope to answer today in this a series of great stories and yeah. thoughts and reflections, because God really does care, and he cares about you, no matter what you're going through, where you're at today. Well, I think that, for me, is the question. God may care, but does he care about me? Good point. You know, and that's where we do want to bring you encouragement today. Well, up first, the story of one Olympian who not only breaks records, but also cultural stereotypes. I know that God is intentional with everything that he brings to me and what he does for me. I'm not here just to be here. Michelle Carter, finish this sentence for me. God made me intentionally. He created me on purpose for a reason, to throw the shot put for sure. That's one of the things I am created to do. Michelle Carter's American record-breaking throw at the Rio Olympics thrusted her to the forefront of shot put success, becoming the first U.S. Olympic women's gold medalist. And it came with suspense on her sixth and final heat. You have 15 to 20 years of work for that one throw, that one moment. And I was like, okay, Lord, you told me I had the victory. So this is the time to show me. <laughs> and I'm gonna give it all that I have, but this is my last throw in the Olympics. And so I just prayed that real quick, got refocused, walked into the ring, and then I just threw. I couldn't believe it. That's the furthest I've ever thrown. 67 feet, eight and a quarter inches. Her dad, Michael Carter, a shot put silver medalist and three-time Super Bowl champion, is also Michelle's coach. She first picked up the shot while in junior high before competing internationally during high school. For the shot put, of course you have to have your strength, but you also need to have speed. My shot put is four kilos, which is 8.8 .8 pounds, which is about the size of a newborn baby. I get set up and you throw. You need to have explosive power. So you need to have good agility to move your feet quick and be in the right place at the right time. So you have to be an overall athlete. You need to be in shape to be able to throw. For Michelle, the phrase in shape opens a fitting cultural dialogue about body shape and body image issues, a subject on which Michelle crusades to encourage female athletes, women, and youth. I think accepting your body and body image is very important because there are images that are put out in the media and in your face every day that you need to look this certain kind of way, then it's gonna take you far in life. But God has created you the way that you are created because there's a job specifically for you to throw the shot put for sure. That's one of the things I am created to do. So I'm larger than the average woman. And I'm okay with that. I've embraced it. Not only does Michelle embrace it, she's influencing her colleagues and how the strong women who compete in it are perceived. I throw the shot put, people expect me to look like somebody named Helga and, <laughs> and not to, you know, not put on makeup to be considered serious about my sport. That I can't actually dress up or bring my femininity in and my own flair and my own style and still be great at what I do and it's okay, but we created different to be unique. Success aside, her flair has made Michelle a shot putting pioneer. She's also a professional makeup artist known as the Shot Diva. Michelle has an added pre-event routine, putting on her own unique game face. I always believe if you look good, you feel good, you do good. And for me, getting ready for a competition, I'm doing my hair, my nails are painted, I'm putting on my makeup, and when I step in that circle, I'm free to do good. What is the must-have for you that you've got to have on? <laughs> my eyelashes. <laughs> I have to have those on, I got, that completes the look for me. Fashion and beauty is a reflection of what's on the inside. And if you're genuine, they match up. The core of who you are will be the same. I can walk in a room of people who may not know Christ and still be myself, and they can still see Christ in me, even though they may not know who it is, but I know that they can see that in me and I'm carrying that with me. Where do you see beauty in the shot put? 
there's a method to the madness, down to like even a quarter of a second, what has to happen in the right order because the technique carries it. If you rely on your strength, it's only gonna take you so far. But when we rely on God, he's able to back us and he's able to work things for us. I'm not gonna go far without him because he's in control of everything. And giving that power back to him makes my job easier. Shot put wonder Michelle Carter carries more than a medal and message, relishing the freedom to embrace herself with a love that's greater than gold. What I admire most about Jesus Christ is his love. His love surpasses all understanding. And God said, I was created in his image, but at the end of the day, you're yourself, and you're who God created you to be. Whoever thought, right? Eyelashes and shot putting go together. I just love Michelle's story and her authenticity about who she is and how God made her. Because the truth is God made each one of us unique. And it's in our uniqueness that we actually express the image of God and we represent him in the world. We're not all made to be the same. God is creative and he sees us actually as his handiwork or his masterpiece. I love what Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now think about this, before you're even born, God prepares in advance the good things, the good works that you're gonna do in your life, and he uniquely designs and equips you specifically to do those things. Now, I don't know about you, but that changes the whole way you do life. Let me ask you this, like what has God created you to do in your uniqueness? We spend far too much time comparing ourselves to others, either wishing we had their assignments or their you know, jobs or their, Whatever, we have to stop comparing and say, God, you've uniquely created me and I wanna be doing the things you've designed me to do. That is the best way to live. We have a resource called Think Boldly, Move Boldly. Extraordinary stories about ordinary people who trusted God. You know, at the end of the day, we're all ordinary. And yet, when we do and live life the way God designed us to, we actually become extraordinary. So I encourage you to call us at 1-855-759-0700 so we can encourage you in your uniqueness. And now, Catherine suffered a massive stroke. Learn how her family handled this tra challenge that led her to miraculous survival. Should I say hi? Yeah. Hi. That's weird. Hi. I'm Catherine Wolf, and at 26 years old, I had a massive brainstem stroke and almost died. Was that all? Uh, my name is Jay Wolf, and um, what was the other question? I forgot it already. Why was I so Catherine and I are both from the Deep South. We went to college together at Sanford University. Freshman year, we met in the cafeteria and we bonded over food there. I weaseled my way in uh, to her affections over some time. After we graduated college, we had a huge blowout wedding that fall. Deep South, all the family, all Southern fried goodness. In that day, on November 6, 2004, began this just radical love story of devotion, of hanging in there with someone for worse, in sickness, forever. Words that our culture doesn't even understand today in regards to marriage. Okay. Can you believe it? Our life was wonderful. I was doing some commercial print modeling, and James would be booked on modeling gigs with me to be a mother son team, and we were living a dream. All that changed pretty radically one morning in April. I was cooking, and my hands went numb. My arms went down, my legs went down. I looked down at her pupils and they were completely dilated and black and I knew something was really wrong. And I yelled and screamed uh, over her and uh, I called 911 immediately. 
it was a quite a critical situation. The majority of patients that present with a bleeding of that magnitude at, and with a vascular malformation of that size, uh, unfortunately die when they, when they arrive in that condition. The surgery that was supposed to last eight hours lasted 12 and then ultimately 16. So I got by myself in, um, in the prayer chapel at UCLA and I began praying and crying through the book of Job and Romans. The morning of April 22nd, Dr. Gonzalez came out into the waiting room as the sun was rising and he was absolutely just tired and exhausted, bedraggled looking. And he said, well, she survived the surgery, um, but there will be deficits. We just don't know what those will be yet. She may be in a vegetative state or paralyzed, um, but she is alive. So how do you respond when life doesn't go the way you hoped or the way you dreamed? Maybe you're tempted to ask the question, does God really care about me when my life is crumbling? And so what do you do when something is taken from you? And in that story, you heard Job mentioned, and so I revisited the story of Job, and I just learned a couple of things that have helped me really navigate the devastating disappointments that I find in my life. The first thing is that bad things happen to even good people. In Job 1.8, uh, God even says he is blameless and upright. The reality is sometimes bad things just happen as a result of a broken world, sometimes without warning. But also I want to encourage you that you can't lose hope. God is still working. In Job 13, 15, he says, though, even if God's were to slay me, yet would I hope in him. Why? Because God keeps his promises. And third, I've learned that God's purposes for your life cannot be taken away, no matter what happens to you. And maybe this is the most powerful. Maybe in the midst of your pain, you like me need to ask sometimes, God, what are you doing and how do you want to use me even though I feel pain right now? In Job 42, verse 2, it says, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. And then finally, I want to encourage you to recognize the power of prayer. Prayer is so powerful because it aligns us to God's plan and purpose. When we don't know why, we go to the one who knows all things and we ask. And so in Job 42, 8, we see finally, my servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer, God says. So, would you, need, would you like someone to pray with you? Do you need help today? Why not call us at 1-855-759-0700? And I'd love to put this book into your hands. It's called The Book of Hope. But today I want to remind you that no matter what you're going through, it does not define you. Instead, the God who made you, who knows everything that's going to happen from the beginning and end, is working for your good. And now let's watch the rest of Catherine's story. Around one or two hours after finishing the surgery, I received a call from the nurses of the ICU, and I was expecting the worst. But the nurses were absolutely surprised. They were calling me because Catherine was following commands. They were asking her to show two fingers, and she was doing that. And I, I couldn't believe it. Normally, that doesn't happen to patients that undergo a surgery of this magnitude. So I, I run to the ICU to see her, and uh, and she, there was, she was following commands, and, uh, and that was the first of many miracles that happened with Catherine. Waking up in the acute rehab almost two months after my brainstem stroke was surreal in every sense of the word. I just couldn't quite catch on. It's like, oh, okay, this is what I do now. I, I lay here for days and nights and weeks and months. And while I, I was okay and in, engaging and embracing my new life, there was this strange, horrible sadness. Because of the trach and also some paralysis in her mouth and on her tongue, she really couldn't speak. Similar to her love of food, Catherine also loves to talk, as anybody who knows her would say. So I would use a letter board that I would type with my working left hand letters, and that would speak words. So I would frantically, over and over, crank out on that letter board, 
I'm the same on the inside. I'm the same on the inside. I'm the same on the inside. Almost four months after Catherine's stroke, made the decision to move to Casa Colina, which was a longer term rehab facility. Swallowing therapist there sat me down and told me to prepare myself for the worst case scenario, which was most likely for Catherine that she probably never swallow again. Eating is about so much more than just food consumption. Eating is life. Eating is what humans do. It's how they socialize. And yet, you can't eat. It's very, very isolating because you're no longer a participant in life. You're watching life. So Joey and I returned to our little house right outside of the brain rehab, and my in-laws had flown in. Now, I looked up, and my three sister-in-laws are playing with my son. And I'm thinking, God made a mistake. I should have died. I can't eat. I can't walk. I can't take care of my son. My face is messed up. I can't hear. I can't see. I can't do anything. Surely this is not right. This is a mistake. And before that thought could even fully land, I had this moment of, Catherine, are you crazy? <laughs> I know better than you know. I'm God, you're not, A. And B, I don't make mistakes. So there is purpose in all of this. Just wait, you'll see. And after over a year in that neuro rehab, I got to leave and I healed tremendously. Nothing was perfect. As you can see, nothing is perfect. And I doubt it ever will be perfect again. And actually, it wasn't perfect before. I was allowed to eat food again on March 25th, 2009. And it was a glorious day when I was allowed to eat after 11 months of no food. I began to walk again on October 21st, 2009, which was exactly 18 months after my brain rupture. In October of 2010, I went in for my routine checkup with my neurosurgeon. Now, this is two and a half years almost after the rupture of my ABM. He held back tears as he told us that I have a small aneurysm behind my left eye. But I want to communicate to you that I don't hang out at that place, a fear of questioning what might happen. I think there's something profound about hope. I think there's something so meaningful when you cling to something beyond what you know and understand. And when that's in there, deep in your head and in your heart, and you believe it with every ounce of your body, something happens. Grit hurts the most. Hope heals. I do feel like God is there saying, this is what you're meant to do. This is your passion. I put it in you for a reason. That's why I say I won the only gold medal that counts. I'm Vincent Hancock, and God made me faithful. Two-time Olympic gold medalist and three-time world champion Vincent Hancock knew at 10 years old that the sport of skeet fueled a passion inside him. 
It's much like golf with the, with the mentality that you have to have. It's a pre-shot routine and you have to execute perfectly every single time. I and mean, I've competed in hurricanes, I've competed in blizzards, and you have to be able to perform perfectly every time. So to me, there is no greater challenge than trying to beat yourself every time. He won his first world championship at 16. Recognize that self-reliance and determination were key to his success. If I have my best day, I know that I'm never going to lose because my best day is perfection. Oh. I've worked hard for years and years and years to be able to get to that point. In 2008, while in training for the Beijing Olympics, he married Rebecca. She quietly tried to keep him grounded in Christ. I was trying to always encourage him to know that God is in control. And in any times of worry or any times of need, like, hey, God is, God's with us and God has our back. I had always thought of myself as being a Christian, but looking back now, I was anything but. I was focused on the gold and that was my only thought process. I mean, I basically drug her along with me. Vincent was the world champion and favored to win the gold. He did and rode the high for a while. I rode that high, I won the World Championships in 2009 for my second time. But in 2010, Vincent only medaled once and began growing irritable and demanding at home. And then it kind of all culminated in my worst year, in one of our worst years of our relationship as well in 2011, where I was competing the worst I'd ever competed. I wasn't having fun anymore and I didn't know what to do. And I was trying to encourage him and tell him just, just pray and just ask God and be at that place with God so he can lead you to where he wants you to go. Finally, his wife's words sank in and he took her advice. I was frustrated at her, I was frustrated at myself, I was frustrated at God and I just, I, I prayed for hours that night and, and cried uh, for hours. That night, God started opening up my eyes and, and showing me the things that I had done, uh, the things that I had done wrong. So it, it allowed me to kind of fix things and say, God, you're right. I am so sorry that I've gotten to this point where I know that I want to be successful in my sport, but I have to focus on you and I have to focus on my family first. Our relationship has blossomed into something that it's never been before, and it's so, so much better now. A year later in London, Vincent became the first skeet shooter to ever repeat as an Olympic champion. He credits God for it all, the wins and the change of heart. He showed me the person that I wanted to be, but he also showed me that I can continue doing what I'm doing and still be the person that he needs me to be. He truly cares about the platform God has given him, only to give it back to God. For Vincent, it's not about accomplishments. It's about what God has done through him for God. In 2016, to the surprise of many, Vincent failed to reach the Olympic finals in Rio, but his faith in God wasn't shaken. Faithful to me means trusting. And for me, at the beginning of my career, I trusted only in myself and I trusted that I want to go and I want to win a gold medal. But to me, God has made me faithful because now I know what faith truly is. It's having a trust in what God has put in my life. I trust in Him, I believe in Him, I love Him, and I'm faithful to the aspect of He is my God. Hi, I'm Julie Hunter, the Executive Director of Windsor Life Center. I would like to personally thank 700 Club Canada Partners for your generosity. Because of you, we can continue on with our programming. Windsor Life Center is an 18-bed live-in treatment center for women battling with drugs and alcohol addictions. These women come in broken from traumas, from abuse, from their addictions, and hopeless. But they leave after a year with us with new coping mechanisms, a healthier lifestyle. Most give their life to Jesus Christ and learn their identity in Him, and they have hope for their future. So thank you so much for your generosity. Yes, thank you for those of you who have partnered with us already because you are 
messengers of hope across this nation. I can't get enough uh, hope in, in this, from the, even the stories today, just reminder after reminder of what God does. And yet you're the one enabling this to happen. So if you haven't yet joined us, I invite you to join our family at 700 Club Canada for as low as $20 a month, but sign up for Pledge Express, it's an automatic deposit each month, which helps us to save on admin fees, and it means your money gets quicker and faster to those who need. Well, give us a call today, and you'll receive our newest book from Pat Robertson, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. Give us a call. The Holy Spirit is the mysterious third person of the Trinity, the active power of God throughout the Bible, and God's promise for you today. In his latest book, Pat Robertson unpacks the crucial role of the Holy Spirit in your life, sharing powerful personal testimonies and answering your deepest questions. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Call or go online now. Well, I heard loud and clear today, Bill, that God does care mm. about me. Did Absolutely. you hear that for yourself? Well, I did. <laughs> yeah. And I was also thinking about Jesus, how when God was, an he, the best way that God answered the question was by sending Jesus. For and we sure. see in Jesus how he cared about every yes. person, no matter what their socioeconomic status, no matter their gender, no matter their race or ethnicity, yeah. or even religious background. Jesus really does care about yeah. everyone. Yeah. And I love that about him. My daughter has this written on, on her chalk wall in her bedroom. It says, God is not in a hurry. I slow down to oh, catch up to him. That's good. And that's you know, really I good. think sometimes we miss God caring in our life because we're just in too much of a hurry to have things fixed and to have things move on and to get out of whatever pain we're in. Well, and on top of that, we have, we have so many voices it's yeah. really, we need to slow down and hear his yes, voice. Yes, we do. Because we can't hear it, even though he's speaking. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, speaking yeah, of, so of hearing God's voice, we do have the privilege of praying. And so Tina asked that we would pray that God would give her a good friend, someone reliable and trustworthy. We're going to pray for that, Tina. And Leonardo said, please pray for uh, God's guidance in my life and that my relationship with my daughter would be restored. We're going to pray for that too, Leonardo. Yeah, so God, we just pray for Tina. Again, we all need a good friend, someone who can... Be Jesus with skin on to us. Someone that can be that loving friend that we can come to when we need things and pray with us. And for Leonardo, I just pray for his relationships as well. God, you know, you are the great God of love who made us in your image. We were designed for relationships. So may both of them and all those viewing be filled with your love and find that in expression with one another, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So good. Thanks for watching today. And please know that God loves you and cares about you. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada, a day of fun quickly turns into a nightmare, and the message of Superbook transforms an entire family.